Welcome. Thank you for your concern about the ongoing Rohingya genocide. I'm Senator Mary Lou McFedrin, and on April 11th of this year, I moved Motion 476 in the Senate calling on the Government of Canada to invoke the Genocide Convention with respect to the ongoing genocide committed by Myanmar against the Rohingya people and to pursue this matter before the International Court of Justice. In the Senate, Senators Omidvar, Otalajan, Ravalia, and Cordy, so we're talking about representatives, multi-partisan representatives, have spoken in support of this motion. However, on May 16th, Senator Martin of the Conservatives adjourned the motion, and despite numerous attempts and numerous conversations, we have not been able to get the motion back for a vote in the Senate. Meanwhile, the situation in Myanmar and Bangladesh is worsening for the Rohingya and other persecuted minorities in Myanmar. We have now almost a million Rohingya who have fled Myanmar, and they live in overcrowded, unsanitary, and dangerous conditions in refugee camps in southeastern Bangladesh. The situation is fragile, and of course, as always in these situations of crisis, the disproportionate burden is on women and children. For example, women who are pregnant, including those that have been pregnant as a result of rape as a weapon of war, have little access to mater maternity care. UN officials have estimated that 60 babies are born each day in the camps. There's a noted increase in violence and exploitation in the camps. A month ago, May 14th, police in Bangladesh rescued dozens of Rohingya, most of them women, who are about to be trafficked to Malaysia by boat. It has been reported that traffickers picked up at least 69 Rohingya from refugee camps in Cox's Bazar, and at least 20 of these were teenage girls. Just this week, Reuters reported that 65 Rohingya, including 29 men, 31 women, and five children, were found stranded on a boat on a southern island in Thailand. In the fall of 2008, we had a very proud moment when both the Senate and the House of Commons unanimously adopted Member of Parliament Andrew Leslie's motion, recognizing that the crimes committed by Myanmar against the Rohingya constitute the crime of genocide. This made Canada the first country to recognize this crime of genocide officially. Recognizing this situation cannot be followed now by continued inaction. As Canadians, as global citizens, as human beings, we have a responsibility to protect the persecuted and the vulnerable. I am hopeful that the Senate will take action on this important motion, but we are running out of time. We have only days left in our agenda. For the Rohingya, justice cannot come soon enough. And for senators, this cannot be a partisan issue. Because of a vote in the House of Commons, we were not able to be joined by our colleagues from the House of Commons. I want to bring to your attention a letter that was sent uh, just a few weeks ago by the All-Party Parliamentary Group for the Prevention of Genocide and Other Crimes Against Humanity to our Minister for Foreign Affairs, Christia Freeland. And in that letter... The uh, members of parliament who make up this all-party committee, each signing it. So we have Ali Hassasi from Willowdale as the chair, Ruby Sahola as a vice chair, Garnet Genuis as the um, also a vice chair, and Cheryl Hardcastle. So once again, multi-party partisan across party lines. And in this letter, the members of parliament very clearly say to Minister Freeland, you need to take action on this. Canada needs to invoke the Genocide Convention. And they close by saying, Canadians can take pride in their country being the first member of the international community to officially condemn the genocide in Myanmar. Yet, condemnation alone is insufficient and more concrete actions need to be adopted. And they quote the, President, the Prime Minister's special envoy, the Honourable Bob Ray, quote, It is a fundamental tenet of Canada's foreign policy that those responsible for international crimes, including crimes against humanity and genocide, must be held responsible for those crimes. I want Khan, Director of Advocacy and Media Relations for the Rohingya Human Rights Network, to speak. Uh, thank you, Senator McFedrin, and thank you for the uh, support 
that you have given this cause and uh, for the work that you are doing on behalf of the Rohingya here uh, in Canada. Uh, on behalf of the Rohingya Human Rights Network, frankly, I'd like to say that I'm disappointed that we have to be here today to speak about what we're speaking about. I'm disappointed because when I stood on this platform on May 2nd, which was Holocaust Remembrance Day, with Senator McFedrin and Conservative Senator Salma Talajan, I stood with the hope that by this time in the parliamentary calendar, Senator McFedrin's motion, Motion 476, which was co-sponsored by senators from all caucuses in the Senate, calling on the Canadian government to invoke the Genocide Convention with regard to the Rohingya Genocide, would have passed. But here we stand only days away from the end of this parliamentary session, and because of procedural delays by Senate Conservatives, it is possible that this very important motion will not come to a vote. In August, it'll be two years since the world first learned of the Rohingya and the genocidal persecution they've endured for four decades. More than 1.3 million Rohingya refugees sit in Bangladesh camps, uh, waiting for the hope of seeing justice for what they have suffered. And more than 400,000 Rohingya remain trapped in Myanmar, 140,000 of them in concentration camps, waiting for the world to step in to stop Myanmar's ongoing genocide of their community and to basically see them as human. It's now more, uh, almost uh, 21 months since we first called on the Canadian government to recognize that genocide was taking place in Myanmar and to invoke the Genocide Convention. It's been nine months since both the Senate and the House of Commons passed mo motions with unanimous support recognizing the genocide in Myanmar. We are still the only country to officially do so. And it's now two months since Senator McFedrin first gave notice about introducing her motion. Debate, on voting, debate and voting on it should have been a simple matter. That took only a few weeks, but he, here we are more than two months later, and we're still waiting. <clears throat> the intent behind this motion is not only supported by the organizations represented on this platform and many senators, but also by the All-Parliamentary Committee on the Prevention of Genocide. Um, which recently sent the uh, letter which the senator referenced to Foreign Affairs Minister Christopher Freeland, calling on the government to do the very thing this motion is asking for, invoke the Genocide Convention against Myanmar and file a brief at the International Court of Justice. So I'm here today to ask Conservatives in the Senate to set aside partisanship and to allow this motion to come to a vote before Parliament rises. This motion is a non-partisan effort, literally dealing with matters of life and death. It has support from every caucus in the Senate, and it's not a government-sponsored bill. So there's no reason why it should be held up. I'd like to remind all senators that those who survive genocide pay a price in the form of smashed hopes and destroyed dreams. As Canadians, as human beings, it's our moral responsibility to act to lift the Rohingya out of their despair and hopelessness that many of them feel because of what they have endured and survived. If we want to live up to our claims of being defenders of human rights, if we, want to be, if we want to live up to our own image of being a moral nation, we have no choice but to act to stop genocide. So I ask all senators to allow a vote to take place on Motion 476 before the end of the parliamentary session and give a glimmer of hope to the Rohingya who have suffered for far too long and lost so much. Thank you.